not long because I want you to enjoy this wonderful, wonderful day. Psalm 73, I'm not going to start off at verse 1, but I'm going to read verses 12 to 17, verses 23 to 25 in the common English version. And it reads like this. It says, look at these wicked ones. Always relax. Piling up the wealth. Ushers, you can relax too. Meanwhile, I've kept my heart pure for no good reason. I've washed my hands to say innocent for nothing. I'm weighed down all day long. I'm punished every morning. If I said I would talk about all this, I would have been unfaithful to your children. But when I tried to understand these things, it just seemed like hard work. Until I entered God's sanctuary and understood what would happen to the wicked. Verse 23 to 25, but I was still always with you. You held me strong. You have guided me with your advice. Later, you will receive me with glory. Do I have anyone else in heaven? There's nothing on earth I desire except you. I need to talk to some real honest people, real, real people, not the ones who have come to church with your holier than I, thou, or sanctimonious face today. I need to talk to some folks who's kind of mad this morning at some of the stuff that they see. Turn this up just a little bit. Y'all going to help me preach. I did say y'all. You're going to help me preach today on the subject of it's not fair, but I still trust him. Now, how many of you know there's some stuff that's going on around you that's just not fair? Uh, you need to tell somebody else next to you. Tell them, say, it's not fair, but I still trust them. <laughs> It really ain't. It's really not fair what's going on around me. I can just preach right there. It's just not fair. It's just not fair at all. <laughs> I'm living right. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. All the hell I'm going through. Okay. Ah. Uh, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever, have you ever seen certain things happen in your life? Oh, have you ever seen <laughs> or been a part of some stuff that happened and then you begin to wonder why is it that God have allowed it to take place? I told you I'm here to talk to real folks today. I'm glad I said happy Mother's Day earlier. Turn this up. Uh, why did God allow this stuff to take place? Especially when it happens to a really nice person. Especially, especially when that person is always helping other folk. Someone who seems to no matter what ha what's the cost, uh, they have the heart to just to be a blessing to everybody. Someone, someone, someone who's been there for everybody. And when something happened to them, you ask God, why? That's not fair. Have you ever asked God, what's the use? I told, let me talk to somebody over here because they might be a little bit more real with me. Have you ever, ever had some situations going on in your life, Brother Elijah, and say, what's the use? <laughs> Is it all worth it all, Pastor Hewlett? Living holy. Paying my tithes. Coming to prayer meeting. Giving a good offering. Volunteering. Is it all worth I need to talk to some real folks today. Is it real worth it? Because it seems like no matter what I do. It seems like no matter how much I make up in my mind that I'm going to 
to do what's right in the sight of God, it seems like, it seems like that all hell has just broken loose. <laughs> it seems as if those who are doing wrong <laughs> is getting the better end of the stick. Those that ain't trying to live right seems to be the ones that got it going on. I need to talk to somebody who's real this morning. How about those of us who live in neighborhoods where right across the street they got drugs coming in and out the house. And you going to work every single day. Working overtime. Getting extra hours. And it still seems as if you can't get ahead. But then you look across the street. And they just bought themselves a brand spanking new BMW with cash. Am I in the house with some real folks this morning? <laughs> uh, you are busting your hump. Let me say it like this. You are busting your tail. Trying to make ends meet. You look at the bills that come in and it always seems as if you're behind schedule. But you're paying your tithes. You're giving your offering. You're sacrificing in the sight of God. And it makes you mad. <laughs> ah, it kind of tees you off, actually. I told you I'm here to talk to the real folks this morning, not the holier than sanctimonious folk. I ain't talking to them. I, if you're holier than sanctimonious, just put one ear, one finger in your ear that you ain't got to hear all of this. But today I'm talking to some real folk because the real folks understand that there are some times you just get, just get fed up to hear because you're living right and you're trying the best you can and every demon around you seems to be prospering but you. I can hear some of, some of y'all say, no, nah, preacher, uh-uh, no. I have never felt that way because I believe God in everything. I have faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Here's my response on that. Stop lying. Because every one of us in this room at one time or another felt this way. I ain't going to be long, but every one of us in this room... <laughs> Felt like giving up. Felt like throwing in the towel because it seemed like no matter what you've done, ain't good enough. You work on a job where millions of dollars come through and temptation come, but you stand on what's right. But that demon who works with you is still in left and right and not getting. But then you go home asking God, what's up? Because now I'm struggling. Uh, look at God and say, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? What's up? Every one of us in this room felt that way, and some of us feel that way right now. Some of us came to church feeling that way this morning on Mother's Day. We got some mothers in here, some single mothers in here who's trying to live right the best way they can. And then they, then they some of their friends who ain't trying to live a, a, a hill of beans is out there doing all types of stuff and ain't struggling. Because you, the single mother who's trying to live right, choose not to sleep with Tom, Dick, and Harry to get where you got to get. You choose not to 
to, 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 to use your body as an open and closed gate to get what you want. You get frustrated because your girlfriend got somebody different at her house every single day and now you're struggling with your kid. I'm talking to the real folk today. I, I, I really am. You struggling with your kids. <laughs> and your girlfriend just telling you what she just bought. Because she had Johnny, sugar daddy, at the house last night. And she gave him a little bit of time. Uh, but because you choose not to make yourself a whore. Uh-huh. Because you choose to live as a virtuous woman in the sight of God. It's frustrating you because they're getting, it seems as if, everything that they need. But you're struggling, seeking the face of God every night. And it seems like nothing is happening. Then you got some men who's here who want to be men of valor, choose not to play with the devil, choose not to try to have their own game on the side to make the extra money. Choose to go to work every day even though they only paying minimum wage. Uh huh. You go to work every day and what you do get, you give to God and say, God, I need you to stretch this stuff. But then you got your boy who you work with at the same time stealing stuff out of the job that you working in, selling it on the side and making extra money and he ain't been caught yet. It frustrates you. I'm talking to the folks who frustrated this moment. It happens to every one of us in this room. One thing I love about the Bible is that it always shows truth. Yes, sir. The Bible always shows truth. Although that these wonderful scriptures was penned by holy men of God, we must never forget that these holy men of God was also human. That's why I love the 73rd Psalm because it was written by a Levite by the name of Asaph. A Levite. One that works in the temple. One, one, one who was dedicated to the things of God. Asaph, 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 Asaph suffering at all but then he had trouble with all of that because the righteous folks seem to be going through hell Asaph had an issue with all of that Asaph, Asaph said listen these, these, these wicked folks that don't seem to be going through nothing they walking around this earth with a bunch of pride in them acting as if they own this earth but the ones you have given the earth to are the ones that's struggling every day of their life. God, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not fair. Asaph, Asaph was confused about the value of his salvation. He said, is it all worth it? He felt, Asaph, Asaph felt that he was living right for nothing. He was being holy and righteous for nothing. How many of us in this room felt like that just recently? If you be honest with yourself, Asaph said, I'm doing all of this for nothing. I'm trusting God for nothing. If trust, yeah, okay, okay, let me say it in our language. If trusting God is like this, I'll go back to the world. That's what you really said. Or you said, I was doing better when I was in the world. 
Sounding like the children of Israel. We've all done it. Asaph was confused because for him, uh, the righteous were supposed to have been the ones that have been being blessed in the sight of the world instead of the world seeming to be blessed in the sight of the righteous. Asaph, Asaph had a conflict in his mind. And this conflict was painful to him. It caused him to be oppressed. He was oppressed until he got to the house of God. <laughs> Asaph was confused until he got to the temple. Until he got to the sanctuary where the presence of the Lord dwells. Asaph, Asaph, when he got there, finally understood what was going to happen to the wicked. Uh -huh. David said it like this in Psalms 37. He said, fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. They got their day. I know, I know, I know you're going through and it seems like the wicked is prospering but they got their day coming. He dropped down to the ninth and the 11th verse and said, for the evildoers shall be cut off but those that wait upon the Lord they shall inherit the earth. Oh, the day is coming. He says, for yet a little while, yet a little while and the wicked shall not be. Yea, thou shalt diligently consider his place, and it shall not be. But the meek shall inherit the earth, and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. Our day is coming. Although it's not fair now, our day is coming. When God finally set all of this stuff straight, the wicked will be like a dream. Once you're here, then you're gone. The writer Asaph, then he affirmed that God is his only possession in heaven and on earth. Asaph took the attitude of Job when Job said, though he slay, yet will I trust in him. Job said, but I will maintain my own ways before him. It's not fair. But I still trust. I'm going through hell right now. But the scripture jumps to mind to me is this. That weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the moment. I encourage you to just hold on until daylight. I hold on until the morning gets here. Because when morning comes, so does the sun. <laughs> when morning comes, so comes glory. And I'm not talking about the sun that's in the heavens. I'm talking about the sun that's in the heavens. Ah, Jesus. It's rough right now. I touch and agree. But there's coming a time. That although it seems as if. They're ahead of us. They better enjoy it while they can. Even when you're in the midst of a situation, thank you, Deacon Offered, as he is. When it seems as if huh, that the devil is getting an upper hand. When people like that seems to be going through all the hell, and they don't deserve it. Some of you are in the same predicament. You going through hell. 
You're going through torment and you don't deserve it. And you say to yourself, God is not fair. The only thing I'm going to tell you today is to still trust him. Trust him no matter what. Because what the enemy wants you to do, he wants you to forfeit your trust. He wants you, he wants you to look at your pain, look at your turmoil, look at your frustration, and he wants you to say, not only what's the use, he wants you to follow action. Which means he wants you to actually throw in the towel, not just think about it. But those of you who got the towel ready to go, I encourage you to put it down. Because God is our refuge and strength. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. No, it's not fair. No, it's not right. But what God allows, he has a plan. Oh, Jesus, thank you. What God allows in your life and in my life, you best to believe that he has a plan that he get the glory. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God, them who are called according to his purpose. There is a plan. I need you to encourage yourself and somebody else and tell them, say, hey, there's a plan. You might not see the blueprint now. You might not understand the ultimate outcome. But God has a plan. You got to remember, you got to remember, when God shows us our destiny, he don't show it all to us. You got to remember that God only shows us a glimpse of our destiny. See, he'll show us, he'll show us uh, uh, the beginning of it and a little bit of the end of it. He ain't going to never show us what's in the middle because if he shows us what's in the middle, we might not want to go forward. Ah. He's not going to show us the hell we got to go through to get to where we're supposed to be because if we saw the hell, we would change our mind and say, God, you can have that. Oh, God, you know, you can have that mess. I'll stay right where I'm at. If we saw what we had to go through to get to where we need to be, not understanding that, 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 that thing that we have to go through, that's the word. You're not getting stuck. You're going through. But the thing you got to go through is really only making you that you will be able to handle where God wants you to be. No, it ain't fair. But I'm going to trust God all the way through whatever I'm going through. I'm going to trust him. Well, Joe, you mean to tell me you're going to still keep your intent? Shut up, woman. Some of us need to tell that demon that's whispering in our ear, shut up, woman. Because... <laughs> I ain't talking about the woman, y'all. I'm talking about the spirit. Come on, get yourself together. <laughs> Actually, and some of them might be a woman. Okay. And it might be a man, but you need to turn around and just say, shut up, woman. Because that thing that's in your ear trying to get you to forfeit your destiny. Because that thing in your ear wants you to focus on your pain, your hurt, your turmoil, your frustration, your lack of money. Uh-huh. That's what that thing is whispering in your ear telling you, say, listen, you know there is another way. Remember when we was on the block, there was another way. Especially those of us who used to be out on the block uh, selling drugs and all of that other stuff. Uh-huh, tell the truth. I know you saved the day, but look straight. Selling drugs and all of that other stuff. You used to having a pocket full of money. So when your pockets get light now, that spirit jump on you and say, now you know, ain't nobody got to know. All it
it takes is just one flip. <laughs> and all of you, you know, just a matter of four hours. But see, what that demon don't want you to see is the jail time that go behind it. I, I'm talking to somebody real good right now. They don't want you to see that jail time to go behind it. They don't want you to see that. They just want you to see that cash flow that you, that's, that's telling you you can come in. You better leave that mess alone. Let's stay the living. <laughs> Stand on what God said. Not on what your situation say. If God gave you a promise, stand on it. If he told you something was going to happen, stand on it. If he told you that your children was going to be saved, you better stand on it. Because you got to understand something. It might not come today. But if God said it, it has no other choice but to have. You don't believe me? He spoke the moon and the stars in the space and they're still there. <laughs> they're still spinning on the very axis of his word. All he did is spoke one time. He spoke your promise just one time. He ain't got to speak it again. <laughs> because when he speak it, when he speak it, there's a time frame. That when he speaks something, it already knows when. We just got to wait for the manifestation. So we have to be able to stand on his word. It's not fair that we go through. But who said that everything was going to be peaches and cream? Who told you that everything was going to be smooth? If a preacher told you that once you trust Christ as your Savior, that everything was going to be all right, he lied to you. What he didn't tell you was that you just made the devil mad. Because you actually think he want to let go of something that he was using so well. What you talking about, preacher? Every last one of us in this room, we was out there for as long as we was out there because we enjoyed it. <laughs> and y'all know my, what I'm saying. The only reason why most of us are saved now is because the pain got too great. We came running to the altar. God, help me! No, nah, because the pain got so great and we didn't want to go through it no more. So our only other option was to run to Jesus. Don't give up today, y'all. Yes, it's frustrating, painful. I know you're tired of seeing everybody else around you get blessed and they ain't even trying to live right. You look at them and just want to slap them. I know, I just, oh no, I'm sorry. We're talking for a bunch of saved people. But I'd be wanting to slap them. Thanks, somebody, for being real. I heard that too. Yes, indeed. But don't slap them. Trust God. Remember what he said to you. Stand on what he said to you. Every time you get frustrated, go back to the sanctuary. Go back to the temple. Go back to the altar. So you can remember what's the destiny of the wicked. Go back to the one who has all things in his hand. Go back to the one who gave you the promise the first time. That he can give you some strength to make it till he manifests what he promised. But then we have to ask ourselves, are we the reason why it has not been manifested yet? Are we the reason? Why it's been held up. Are we truly walking the way we're supposed to walk or are we actually fronting our walk? 
Are we looking righteous and not being righteous? Are we acting holy and not living holy? Holiness is not our clothes. Yes, there's things we should be wearing or should not be wearing. Holiness is a lifestyle. How you living? Those of us who grew up in uh, teenagers in the 80s, living color, used to come on. In the, in the beginning of that song, just say, how you living? What? How you living? What? How you living? In living color. You know. The truth of the matter is a whole lot of us are living in living color. That means we're doing everything outside of living right. That's what that meant. I'm living in living color. That means, man, I'm going to be doing everything that I can do. See? We're saved, but living in living color. Every color that's in the spectrum, that's us. We don't know who we are. If the world's wearing green, and I'm going to just keep it that way, we wear green. If the world's wearing pink, we're wearing pink. Folks in the church, men in the church walking around with their pants down. You better find out what that means. <laughs> Oh, Savior, my Lord. But the ankle bracelet is really nice. You better find out the meaning. Oh, y'all ain't know that, huh? You better find out the meaning. It might be a nice fashion statement, but find out the meaning of stuff because there's a spirit behind stuff. And you could be completely innocent. But find out the meaning behind stuff. Don't just do it because the world do it, because it look nice coming down the runway. Because everybody else is doing it. We are a people that likes to follow everybody else. We are. We are. We are. iPad came out. How many of us got an iPad? That watch came out that goes with the apple. How many of us tried to get the watch? <laughs> Did you understand what I'm saying? Don't be followers. Be leaders. <laughs> what are you going to invent? What are you going to invent, D? What are people going to remember you by? Something that you followed or something that you started. Don't focus so much on the wicked and what they're doing. You are the one that has been called to change the atmosphere. You are the one that have been called to bring a change to this world. Why do you think he saved you not to just sit here and listen to a preacher he saved you to make a difference to be an influence in your surroundings what have you influenced in a positive way because a whole lot, every one of us in this room have influenced something in the negative way. But uh, what have we influenced or you influenced in a positive way? What do your neighbors say about you? What do your co-workers say about you? Or do they, they can't stand to see you coming?
Don't focus on the world. Focus on the promise that God gave you. And let him manifest that very thing in your life. And yes, it seems like they're prosper, but that's only for a time. How many of you know this? That the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Oh, it's coming, but you got to be in his will. 